Ash One Liner for taking the output of your Arduino that you usually would see like this and plug it directly into your terminal. Now this may seem very straightforward, but if you try to go on the internet like I did, it'll take you a while to find out something that can timestamp it. <coughs> this is what we really want. We usually want some sort of timestamped analog input or digital data. You, you get the picture. So anyway, this is the Arduino program we're going to test it with. It's going to start serial at 9,600 baud, and we're going to, you know, increment, just write more lines of X. Copy pasta, just remember to replace this, whatever you see down there. If you're using a Mac like I do, use the CU instead of the TTY. It, it, it is important. And you'll see something like this. So, and it resets when you uh, initially start the, uh, <coughs> the, uh, yeah, the, the, the program. So now it's going to run consistently. So for a Linux box, it'll actually be able to do the nanoseconds. So it'll be even more data than this. But this is pretty good. This is pretty good. So you'll see that basically you're getting lots of lots of data. And if you have like some other way of um, doing some time, like adding a little bit to the right, you can figure out what's going on in terms of nanoseconds and milliseconds and stuff. Anywho, um, since it's in the shell, I can pipe this into a figlet file and get some really gnarly looking output. I can also, you know, use some font with it. I like this one a lot. It's called Contessa. It really makes it look snazzy. Anyway, another thing you can do, since it's just in the standard output, you can pipe it to a file. So we go data file dot dat. This is uh, if you notice it was a um, comma separated value. So if I open up the terminal, go to the thing, and then if I go like tail dash f, which allows you to see the data that's being added to it. This is what's coming out of it. And of course, with tail dot f, you could um, do the figlet thing again, or even maybe. Adding some cool effects like this and monitor what's going on. There's something else that's happening with uh, this data. Not only can you have it sent there, you can also have it say stuff. <clears throat> so let me show you this. This is pretty cool. Um, I'll just have it so you can see what's going on. So because it's in the shell and in this portion right here where it says system, you can have commands run when certain events or certain data readings are available. Like if you're doing temperature for your food or measuring someone's power level, for example. So, let's see. If this is ever going to get to the bottom. Good, good. And so I'll just talk a little bit more about, about this while we're waiting. I have all these scripts here in shell scripts. This is in my own GitHub repository, which you can visit. It's just GS Kellyan, and it's going to be under Arduino data logging. Um, I don't suggest going the GNU screen method for now. I haven't really fixed that up, but this quite robust, and uh, yeah, it's short. It's basically copy pasta. Um, this is also there, so if you want, you could uh, just fork the repository or you. Know, clone the repository, run this, etc. Oh, um, good thing to note, I'm using this kind of uh, format, Unix time epoch. You can always get it back to the regular epoch by typing in date hyphen r and whatever, and that'll give you that. So it's very important. All right, so we're back here, and very soon you'll see that it'll activate that trigger, and we'll call it. Voila. It's over 9,000. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Please subscribe.